Lately, there's been a lot of flurry in the automotive market, new car launches, especially in the B and C segment. Here is what I noticed. Car makers are giving more competitive prices, more features, and more power in the engines. But there's something else I noticed also. Some of them are really funky looking. So is it a trend that people are beginning to look at cars more like handphones, more like a fashion statement, a statement of who they are and what they are? I don't know, but this is the GAC GS3 MZoom Premium R. Look at the front. Now you know what I mean by funky. And you notice it's not just one straight grille. They put in extra lines. They play on the colors. There is gray, there is black, there's body color, and even a gold insert. The GS3 is actually classified as the B segment SUV, but it seems to me car makers are actually making them bigger now. So compared to the X50, the Omoda 5 and the HRV, the GS3 is actually longer and wider. And the wheelbase of 2650mm is also the longest amongst the three. The design cue from the front is carried through on the sides and also through to the back. This car will definitely stand out in traffic. And look at the bottom half, man, the bumper and the twin exhaust. This car will appeal to somebody who is very young at heart and wants something that is different from the mainstream. The view from the back is not bad. There's high visibility and the sunroof also helps to give you that feeling of airiness. On the road, the GS3 handles just like any other vehicle in this class and uh, now we are going at about 90 something kilometers per hour you hear actually nothing but the tires and the tire noise will actually depend on the road surface and now i'm signaling right to overtake and what you see on the screen is actually uh, the right hand side the blind spot on the right hand side and if i signal left you see the left hand side doing that so that is one of the safety features on this car. It doesn't have a blind spot monitor, but it has this camera very much like the lane watch in the Honda. And the only thing is it shows on both sides. On top of that, you also have your autonomous emergency braking and your forward collision warning and also lane departure warning. So all the items that matter are there and you can turn off the lane departure warning very easily. Just touch it on the screen and it goes off. On top of that, uh, the Premium R, which is this vehicle, has got hill descent control. And of course, uh, traction control and ESP are very uh, standard equipment on all models. We have six airbags, so in terms of safety, this vehicle is okay, lah, not a problem. There are three driving modes and they are quite easy to switch. For two of the modes, you can use just the gear stick here or gear lever. You push it down once and it immediately takes you to sport mode. You push it again and it goes into comfort mode. There is one more mode that's the eco mode and for that you need to go to the screen and you just press the eco button and you're on. So, uh, of course, the best mode in terms of fuel economy will be the eco mode. Lor. And actually, I've driven in all three modes. The sport mode is more aggressive. The comfort mode is still quite aggressive. So you can actually go quite fast in comfort mode. And in eco mode, they still tune it for quite sporty performance. But of course, we know that they actually 
thrown down everything including the fuel and stuff like that and also they go carefully on the boost to give you the best fuel economy so in terms of fuel economy it's five point something liters per hundred that's the claimed fuel consumption by the car maker but of course as with all turbocharged engines you will suffer worse fuel consumption if you gun it all the time now. Yeah, so that is something for you to note. But if you just drive it normally like this, there's a good chance you will get good fuel consumption. For long distance driving, I think the comfortable suspension is very good for those with family. After all, this is a family SUV. Yeah? So the comfort of the passengers will be quite good. The suspension is not too soft and not too hard. So just about right. It's always difficult to get the suspension right, you know, because uh, on the one side there's the performance, on the other side there's the comfort. So it's always somewhere in between and it all depends on where the manufacturer wants to select the point where he wants that comfort or the performance point to be. And I think they've done a pretty good job here. La. Okay, so let's just check out the handling of the car through these few corners. Uh, these are the more exciting ones, or shall we say more fun ones? Yes, but of course the road is narrow and it's two-way traffic. So we got to be very careful, yeah, not to go into the other lane. And of course, watch out for cars that are coming. So we are in sports mode and sports mode does not change the suspension setting. I think it only changes the engine tuning and also the transmission uh, gear change points I think to give you a more dynamic drive so in terms of handling you will find the suspension a little bit on the soft side but remember this is a family SUV and for people who like to drive this car as a family SUV you will find it perfectly all right because you're not going to go racing right so like on these corners we are going at a fair clip and the car is taking it very well so for 80 or 90 percent of the people who buy this car as an SUV you'll find this car perfectly okay to drive uh, and uh, occasionally if you want to go a little bit faster it is possible uh, because it has the power and the one thing I will miss very much on this car would be the pedal shifters yes because it's got a sporty performance very high torque good engine horsepower, a DCT gearbox, 7 speed and that. The only issue is you can't change your gear. It, you have to allow the car to change gear uh, because first of all, there are no pedal shifters and second of all, there is no manual mode. So you cannot even shift your gear shift to a manual and then change up and down manually. So it all depends on the programming of the transmission by the manufacturer yes if there was a set of uh, pedal shifters or even a manual shift mode that would definitely be a advantage for this car if you like this you can get the premium r for 128,900 or the exclusive at 118,900 so let us know if you like this car and let us know in the comments below Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Till we meet again in the next video, bye bye.